in the fantasy hockey game, sometimes you got to get a little bit risky. And on the latest edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, we're looking at some high risk, high reward fantasy targets for the upcoming season. Let's tap in and let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. We're back in the booth and ready to ride for the latest edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, your daily source for fantasy hockey news and very, very soon steal daily betting breakdowns. What is going on, everybody? Shout out to the everydayers holding us down, making us your first listen every single day. You know what it is. Today's FanDuel episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Place your first $5 bet and get started with 200 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I'm going to spit these words out, Mr. Roden, and I think I'm just a little bit giddy, not only for today's episode. The NHL season is rapidly approaching i believe the international series kicks off on october the 4th one o'clock eastern time devils sabers let's drop the puck already my friend speaking of which today's episode high risk high reward players some of these guys you might have to take a little shot in the dark on and run the risk that comes with them however they might pay off in a big big way i'm intrigued i see some of your names you have on the graphic there over to you, as always, my friend. I have a couple of names that I'm excited to share with you that I haven't yet, and I'm intrigued to have your take on them. Hit me with yours. Who are you looking at? Yeah, there's some very intriguing guys that we're going to be talking about on this episode. High risk, high reward players. Guys, where we're looking at their average draft position and wondering and thinking to ourselves, is it too much of a risky situation to take them at that position? Maybe you want to let them fall down the board a little bit more. Starting off for me, and I've mentioned this in the past, especially when we did the Carolina Hurricanes episode, but Andre Sveshnikov is a high risk, high reward fantasy hockey player for this upcoming season. Obviously, a lot of uh, recent injuries that have made some major concern with this guy's value moving forward. You know, very shortened stints in the last two years. 64 games played in the 2022 season, 59 games in the 2023 season. He hasn't played a full season since his rookie year back in 2018. But for me, the value is there. He plays so well with Sebastian Ajo, obviously Seth Jarvis in the mix on that top line with those three as well. He is a banger league beauty as well, in my opinion. Oh, over 142 shots, uh, sorry, over 142 hits last year. He went down from 205 to 144 uh, shots on net as well. So clearly he has the volume of shot totals that we've seen him do in the past. Over 200 shots uh, in back-to-back -back years in the 2021-22 season. Over mm -hmm. 100 hit, over 110 plus hits on a yearly consistent basis from this guy. He gets into the uh, he gets the penalty minutes as well, 58, 71, a guy that we should have probably talked about a little bit on the Banger League Beauty episode. But yeah. for me, Andre Svechnikov, there is risk with this player. And looking at where his average draft position, obviously it depends on what league you're using, Yahoo, ESPN, fan tracks, whatever it is. As of right now on Yahoo, it does look like his average uh, draft position is somewhere around that fourth round. Um, that's where they have okay. him. At, that's where they have okay. him projected and ranked. I think that's where he should be going. But mm. clearly, when you get the uh, the injury risk and the injury concern with this player, uh, there's some risk involved with this guy. But you know, he's proven to be a reliable source of, like I said, the hits in the shot category. And if he can stay healthy, if there's no risk, uh, or sorry, if there's no chance of him, you know, of, if there's if he's able to avoid the long stints of absences in the regular season, there's 70 plus points written all over this guy. So the high risk, but also high reward. You love talking about this player and I respect I that you came on here. I hope that he jumped to your top of your list when you thought about this angle yeah. that we were talking about, because I knew you were going to talk about it and I left him off, but he's got to be on this list. So thank you for bringing it up. This is why we do this together. If he stays healthy, if Aho and Jarvis do what they do and expect I expect them to. I know there was some concern on my part 
that if Kuk and Yemi struggles, they might move Jarvis back to, I think, his natural position of center and junior, perhaps. That was a concern for me. Right now, it's looking like it's Fetchnikov, Ajo, Jarvis. I think that's what Rob Brindamore would like to see and have Kuk and Yemi eat that second line center minutes, even though, who, talking about risky, that's risky right there. Svechnikov will pay off. He brings the edge, he brings the physicality, and he has the offensive flair. And then you put him together with two studs, their two best offensive players. I love this number one high risk, high reward target. I also have to bring up Joseph Wall. I think he came to mind first for me. And I understand that I think I read he has yet to play a full season of professional hockey. Uh, I don't know his track record with the Marlies fully in terms of when he was joining, when the injuries happened to him. But I know this, the injury concern is very, very real with this player. However, when he's in there, number one, we still expect the Toronto Maple Leafs to be a top three team in that division. Uh, could that maybe fall off a little bit? Maybe. Joseph Wall's also going to get the look to be the number one guy in Toronto. I know they brought in Stellars. I know they brought it. They have Matt Murray there as a security blanket, who is now supposedly healthy. This guy, if he can stay healthy, just like Svechnikov in terms of that risk. I got other guys on here that it's not risky because of injuries. I like that we're both starting here. If Joseph Wall can hold it down and stay healthy, he's proven, Steele, that he's a cerebral-like goaltender, unflappable, and take in his playoff numbers. And I know it's only seven starts or four starts. 933 save percentage, 1.78 goals against average. You can agree with me on this one. He makes the big save when counted on, but can he be counted on to be in the lineup night in and night out? That's the risk. But if you take a shot on him, Steele, and you know I'm invested into this player, so I'm. this isn't just lip service. He could be a number one goaltender on a really good team. I'll talk about another goaltender after the break, but they don't come around that often. Joseph Wall, lots of risk. But potentially a lot of reward as well as well. Well, I'll, I'll get off the injury train for now and I'll come back to that in the next segment, but I'll continue on the train of goaltenders. And for me, Jeremy Swayman has high risk, high reward written Whoa. all over him. Look, there's a lot of us that are implementing okay. the zero G strategy and letting goaltenders fall down the board, targeting the center, left wing, okay. right wing and high strung defensemen first. That's what we're implementing. A lot of us anyway, and letting those goaltenders fall down the draft board. Jeremy Swayman, for me, does have some risk to this situation coming up. And I, again, we do like what the Boston Bruins did in the offseason, bringing in Elias Lindholm, bringing in Nikita Zadorov. They still have David Pajanek, who is one of the best and most talented players in the National Hockey League. But we still got to take into consideration that he lost his partner in Linus Allmar. What is that new relationship with Jonas Corposalo going to look like? What is Jeremy Swayman getting this massive workload as well going to look like for his season coming up? And um, again, for Jeremy Swayman, uh, last year was the most amount of games played that he's played, 44 games played. They're going to be using, they're going to be work working him this entire season in Boston, Jeremy Swayman, because I don't know if they can have put a lot of faith into Jonas Corposalo. He'll definitely have a lot of, mm. a, he'll have a stronger defensive group mm. in front of him, which can probably get him his confidence back. Swayman's going to have a huge workload this year. Obviously the consistency of his game speaks for itself. Three straight seasons of 23 plus wins in the league, you know, minimal losses, overtime losses as well. The career 19, uh, uh, 919 save percentage with a career 2.34 goals against average. It's all beautiful. All said well and done, but we haven't seen him with that massive workload. That worries me also still yet without a contract. Yeah. So, that's a big concern for me as well. They sure. should be in two different ballparks right now. It looks like from the rumors that have been swirling around, uh, you know, the the management has been offering somewhere from six to or sorry, the six point two to six point five million mm -hmm. uh, on an average year uh, salary basis. Swayman's looking for close to ten million, maybe even more than ten million. Uh, 10 million. They're in different ballparks right now. There seems to be a rift between the relationship currently with management and Swayman's team. That worries me as well. So there's some risk with this player if you draft him too high. The Boston Bruins finished with 263 goals scored last year, Steele. That was only 13th best. And I know you're going to say, okay, that's in the top half of the league. That's better than most teams. It is. But this is a squad that's going to have to hang its hat in the defensive zone. 
And after that top line, and I know this is a case with a lot of teams, so I'm not just nitpicking one of those squads that you and I truly like to uh, see lose. I'll just leave it like that. They don't have the offensive depth to leave their goaltender out to dry. They got to be a back to front club. They have to also find some secondary scoring, regardless of Jeremy Swayman. So I'm here for the take. I'm hoping, Steele, that this contract can get out of the way because that's a, a goaltender that, even though it is bringing some risk, and I really do appreciate these angles because I think everyone's just so high on Jeremy Swayman right now, and we will get to break in a second. But there is that other caveat that we haven't. He's going to have to take that lion's share. Yornisko Prasalo is not a guy to be relied upon. However, you can rely on the rest of today's episode to be bringing that heat with some high-risk, high-reward fantasy targets. I got another goaltender and a shout-out to a coach for doing a really good thing, Steel. I got a little ode to torts coming up right after the break. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Indeed. We're driven search for better. When it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. You need to hire. You need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global visitors, according to Indeed data, a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Listeners of this show right now get a 75 sponsored job credit, 75 bucks that is steel to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support the locked on fantasy hockey podcast by saying you heard about this on this show. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply. You need to hire, you need indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time now has a brand new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time looking for those thousands of bad ones right now you got to be checking out game time taking the guesswork out of buying tickets with this app download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n nhl for 20 bucks off Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, the follow button, leave a five-star review. Flip and I appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Continue to leave the comments on the YouTube channel. We love all the feedback, all the conversations we've had with all of our listeners on there. So continue doing that as well. Ask mm. us anything you'd like in the DMs on Twitter or Instagram. And again, leave the comments on the YouTube channel. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Flip, high risk, mm. high reward players. We've mm. named quite a few superstars or stars, at least in this league. Sveshnikov, the, uh, the uh, you know, Jeremy Swayman, the goaltending of Joseph Wall and his potential with the Maple Leafs. Who are you looking at next who... You see the you see the potential, but there is some risky behavior if you draft this if you draft this player. First and foremost, Philadelphia Flyers is where I'm looking. Yes. I'm looking into their blue paint with Ivan Fedotov. And I'll talk about that in a second. But John Tortorella is a coach that you and I have talked a lot about. And I still don't necessarily agree with Torts' style. Do I like him for hockey? Yes, I do. <laughs> but that's not a guy I'd want coaching my squad, but that's just me. However, this move of bringing in Guy Goudreau, obviously just losing his two boys. We've talked all about that steal. We're not going to go down that path. This is a class eight move by John Tortorella, bringing in Guy Goudreau to the Flyers practice. I don't know if you saw this. He was a special guest of Tortorella. He yeah. came in. He talked to the guys. He was there at practice. He was a coach himself. And I just have to stick tap hats off and give one of those real human people moments to a guy who you and I have been very harsh on in John Tortorella. And that is just a class a move. And we need more of that in professional sports. However, Ivan Fedotov is a very intriguing name in steel. This is a guy with three games played in the NHL and here goes the high risk. I don't know if it might even be Samuel Erson in the cage. I don't know if this 6'6 Russian beast, who you know I really like, and the Flyers are high on, they have $3.25 million tied up in this goaltender where Samuel Erson is making around 1.5. What does that mean? 
they are going to give this man the chance to be the starter in Philly, in my opinion. And for the most part last year, Steele, this was a pretty good Flyers club holding down that third spot. Very tough to play against and lots of good young forwards in that top six forward group. So this is a bit of an enigma. A 27-year-old goaltender with three games under his belt. This is high risk, high reward, baby. And I think he fits the bill to a T. Yeah, he really does. And, and definitely struggled last year in those three contests that he was uh, that he played in. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, you don't really know if it's going to be Fedotov or if it's going to be Urson getting the, uh, the, you know, the, the many starts or getting, you know, the workload for the most part right. for this Philadelphia Flyer season. You know, it definitely could be a 50-50 split all year round just to see what they're working with. And um, yeah, it's definitely a high risk, high reward situation because there are some really good pieces with the Philadelphia Flyers. Up but front, especially. Up front, uh, especially. You know, I really like the, you know, the, the young player coming in, Matt Bay Mitchkov. We love mm -hmm. Travis connecting what he brings offensively. You know, so there's some potential. We've seen some. There's a bunch. There's yeah. there's some inconsistency with Morgan Frost, but there's times where he really does show out, uh, show out and, 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 yeah. and you know, really show what he showcase his skill set. Again, Philadelphia Flyers, a little bit of a risky team, but there are a couple of guys over there. For me, anyways, I'm going to go back to the injury concern with the high risk, mm. high reward with this guy. Dougie Hamilton has high risk, high reward, high reward sure. written sure, sure. all over him. Um, obviously, was only held to 20 games last year after that pectoral injury, which caused him to have a uh, season ending surgery. He only had 20 games played last year. The year prior, though, 82 games played, career high 74 points. He's never been remotely close to 74 points in his entire NHL career. You're going to have to go back all the way to 2016, uh, the 2016 season, first year with the Calgary Flames, uh, second year with the Calgary Flames, where he finished with 50 points. So obviously a career year for him last year in New Jersey, misses, you know, 62 games uh you know, this last year, again, with New Jersey after the pectoral yeah. injury. But when you look at what he's capable of doing over 200 and uh, to over 250 shots in that career year, 86 blocks, 64, uh, 64 hits, the penalty, 50 penalty minutes. It's really the power play as well. That also concerns me because when Luke Hughes comes back, does he get some power play one time? Also bringing in Brett Pesci on the, on the blue line might take away some of his uh, uh, take away some of his average time on ice as well moving forward. But for me, this could be a guy that we consider as a bounce back candidate for this upcoming year. Cause if he can stay healthy and he rolls on that top power play unit with Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, Timo Meyer, all those guys, he is going to be a legitimate top tier fantasy hockey defenseman moving forward because of, of what he's able to do, but he's got to stay healthy. Talked about at length this New Jersey Devils club and everything yeah. that they've done that I really think it's just going to propel their forward group to big things this year. And their offensive unit as well on the top power play, most definitely. Dougie Hamilton, I think, has to fit, fit the bill for this one. I think we're really nailing it on the head here with some of these guys. Am I more a little bit more comfortable with a guy like Dougie Hamilton after all of this time to recover? Uh, compared to perhaps a guy in Joseph Wall who's gone down with a whole bunch, um, and maybe Svechnikov, who's also had a few. I think I'd be more comfortable if it's those three. If I'm targeting one, I would probably target the one that you just spoke about in Dougie Hamilton. I like this deal, and I really do like this New Jersey Devils squad, even with their struggles last year and their injuries. Finished with 264 goals scored, 12th best in the NHL, right behind the Florida Panthers. So this is a potent offensive group. Simon Nemich to take a step. When Luke Hughes comes back, you know I'm banking on him to take a step. And then you bring in two bruising big boys in Pesci and Dylan, and a guy who led the NHL only a couple of years ago in the cage and shut out save percentage goals against and one of the best backups in a long time in Jake Allen. Now I'm starting to get excited, Steele, and you and I are going to have to break down our division rankings. One through eight of every single division. We got draft tips. We got a whole bunch of other specials coming up before the puck drops on October 4th. Steele, take us to break and let's wrap this bad boy up. Global series with those New Jersey Devils and the Buffalo Sabres. Like Flip said, lots more to talk about. Everything you need to know on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast and coming up after the break. But this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. 
FanDuel, hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you can place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. And once again, thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, leave a five-star review, flip it. I appreciate all the love you've been showing this this show, this podcast, all summer long, all season long, and going into the NHL regular season as well. So thank you Mm. so much uh, for all of that this offseason. We really do appreciate it, uh, and it really does show. So thank you so much for all of that. Flip, I'm going to hand it over to you, my friend. Okay. One last player that you believe has a lot of risk, but also a lot of reward, depending on where you draft them in this upcoming year. Honorable mention to Trevor Zegris in this situation. Yeah. Honorable mention to, and this is a deeper cut, and I think it's far more risk than potential reward, Pierre-Luc <laughs> Dubois. Final yes. chance on him. Like, after this one, steal, he's dead to us all in terms of fantasy value. <laughs> but we like what's going on in Washington. So we until do. they step on the ice and we see what's good anyway. Uh, so honorable mention to those two. And I thought long and hard about this deal, but I watched a lot of Jonathan Huberto coming up through junior playing in Florida the first couple of years, lucky enough to see him live in Toronto. This is a really good hockey player who I can't put a finger on what has really happened. And I know this is a like beating a dead horse kind of conversation. So I'll keep it to a tight and new angle. And I'll say this, and you can totally disagree with me, and I wouldn't be mad. I don't think the Calgary Flames are going to be nearly as bad as most people think. Dustin Wolf has looked really good in the preseason, and I know that's the preseason. However, this is a goaltender that's done his thing in the AHL, and I know I'm not here to talk about Dustin Wolf, but this team is going to be better than I think a lot are letting on. And when I look at Jonathan Huberto, oh, we know this is risky steal. And I, you know, even just saying, I'm telling people to consider drafting a guy (laughs) who has gone from 222 shots all the way down to 126 and then 143 last year is so risky. It's hard for me to even put it out there, but I'm going to stick to my guns because he is that good. He still has that talent. He's just lost his touch. Can he refine it? It's risky. But if he does and even returns to, let's say, steal. He's not going back to 115. I'm not going there. But let's say he even touches 70, 75, and you were in on it because you're tapped into this show. That might be the difference for you in a number of weeks head-to-head or at the end of your league, regardless of the format. 52 points last year. Uh, 143 shots. Ew. But 60 hits, 52 – or sorry, 49 penalty minutes – there's still value there in deeper leagues, even with those numbers. So if he can return to even 75% of the form he was, I think he fits the mold as very high risk and hopefully high reward. He definitely fits that mold to a T. And I agree with you for me, Jonathan Huberdo. Uh, he's an honorable mention. You know, uh, I'm also going to throw it, uh, you know, I Pierre-Luc Dubois is an honorable mention guy for high risk, high reward. We do like what's happening in Washington, but the there's there's we some do. major we concern do. we do <laughs> yeah. but there's some major concern with Pierre Luc Dubois between the ears and the attitude that he brings and the culture that of he course. has uh that comes with him so that's major concern with him I'm also going to throw Brandon Montour as an honorable mention because he's going oh. to a new team uh missed some games yeah. last year as well you know obviously that career year he had with Florida 73 points again a guy that has never been close to 73 points in his life besides that one year <laughs> Uh, with the Florida Panthers, True. he's a perennial 30 to 35 point guy, maybe 40 on the high side. Uh, he does fill out the peripheral uh, peripheral uh, statistics, but again, a little bit of a high risk, high reward guy with that, especially going to the Seattle Kraken who struggle offensively at times. For me, though, I am going with a little it's a little bit off the board as well. Deeper cut guy, but I'm going with Taylor Hall. I see tremendous amount of reward with this player. Okay. But there's also a tremendous amount of risk with him as well. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've been reading in on, on Taylor Hall a lot this offseason. He, you know, he said multiple times, this might be the best he's ever felt in the last five years. You know, he's getting a chance to play with Connor Bedard, 
limited to 10 games in his first year with Chicago, obviously serious injury once again, which is he's had, he's dealt with some serious significant injuries throughout his entire NHL career, mm. but the getting the chance to come in and play with one of the most generational players in Connor Bedard, that makes him a high reward type of player. But you also in the back of your mind, you've got to consider all the injuries and uh, the ability to not stay healthy for Taylor Hall. So it's definitely a deeper cut. I'm looking to draft this player no matter what in the later stages of my draft, uh, you yeah, know, second very- or second or last pick, uh, yeah. and just taking a chance on him. Because again, Connor Bedard, Tyler Bedard like is also in the mix. So I think he also fits the bill to a T in the sense of high risk, high reward players, obviously, hopefully more reward than risk. But I'm willing to take the chance on him because he gets to play with Connor Bedard and everything that I've been reading this offseason about him feeling the most healthy. He's setting lengthy goals uh, for this upcoming year. Hopefully, you know, one of his goals is to reach 30 goals once again in his career. So for me, Mm -hmm. Taylor Hall is also on this list. Well, I hope he just scores some of them as well. And I, hey, I'm here for this take. And uh, this might be one of those situations that I hope you and I don't have to go wire to wire to take this player because he was on my little, I didn't even want to come on here and say it. <laughs> no, straight up, I didn't want to say this one. I've been tipping my hand a little bit too much, if you get me. And this is a vastly yes. improved top six forward group. I'm not ready to come on here and say the rest of the team is. And I'm not ready to come on here and say that this is going <laughs> to be a good team. However, Another year of Philip Kurashev, he showed some signs. Lucas Reichel's been slow to develop, but he's a good young player. I'm not excited about him, but when you bring in Tara Vinen, a healthy Taylor Hall, and Tyler Bertuzzi, it's an improvement. Big yes, time on last season. So I'm with you on this because all that matters is he's playing <laughs> with CB, baby. CB 98. And uh, I'm intrigued to see what he does this year. Back to fully healthy. Missed some time with the face injury, the jaw, I believe. I need the puck to drop on this season, Mr. Roden, because I'm getting a little frothy around the mouth here, and I need some of this betting action to come back as well. Don't even get me started on I that. Will, I will say Bubble Bedard was a different breed because mm. he was popping off for Chicago, but he does definitely have a lot more to work with in that top six group, so it's going to be exciting to see what he's capable of doing in his second year in the National Hockey League. Thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, making it your first listen every single day. For your second listen, please go enjoy the Locked On NHL Podcast, where this season never ends, providing national expertise with a local perspective. You can find it in the description below. You don't even have to search for it. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Once again, good luck with all of your fantasy hockey drafts this weekend. And this upcoming week, Flip and I are going to be very, very busy with our own leagues, as well as different different keeper leagues we're a part of Mm -hmm. with friends and family. So we're looking forward to all these drafts coming up this week. We wish you good luck with your drafts, all of your bets this fall, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow.